and I'm a civil engineer that teaches digital fabrication to preschoolers and kindergartners. So imagine being inside of a room that has a bunch of tools that brings your ideas to life. That's what our fab lab is, or fabrication laboratory. So we use things like laser cutters, 3D printers, vinyl cutters, CNC routers to bring our ideas to life. And we have to use STEAM in order to do that. So think about STEAM in a way that's untraditional, like the way you think. So normally you use a pencil and a piece of paper to draw your ideas out. But we in the Fab Lab like to use computers or laser cutters or CNC routers or 3D printers to do what we normally could just do on a piece of paper and pencil. So the laser cutter works like, hmm, imagine the sun inside of a box being shined down and reflected onto a point and burning whatever your material is. That's how our laser cutter works. So our laser cutter is controlled by a computer and our computer has our design in it. So using our imagination, we can bring our ideas to life using digital fabrication. Hi, I'm Kaylin. I'm the generalist at the Warrensville Heights branch and we're making a paper catapult today. Make sure you have your paper and whatever you got to roll it around. I've just got a pencil here. Um, you can have a marker or a dowel rod or anything really that just helps you roll it up with just that little bit of space there. Um, so we're gonna roll up a couple of these. You don't have to worry too much about getting it perfect um, or even really tight around that pencil or whatever object you have. You'll just, once you kind of get to the end of it here, kind of tap it to even out the ends. And then we're going to tape it at both ends and in the middle. And we're gonna start by rolling two of these. So another one, just like I did that first one. We're rolling the paper because it gives it more strength and structure to actually help hold together and to withstand that pressure whenever we're using a rubber band and sort of pulling on the structure of it to be able to fire that object. So again, tape on either end, tape in the middle. And then before I show you this next part, we're gonna roll one more around one of these um, already pre-rolled pieces because we want it to fit around. So again, you want it to kind of form to it. You don't want it to be too tight because this one's actually gonna fit on there to rotate around. So when you pull that arm back, um, it will actually move against the other one. So again, we're gonna tape, to hold that together. And then actually I don't really need one in the middle on this one because we're just gonna cut off an end piece because it's gonna be a fairly small piece. So we can go ahead and do this part now. So we'll just cut off, you know, maybe inch and a half worth. So that's gonna slide on this other piece here. Now with these two that you've rolled, um, you can get out a ruler if you really want to be precise about it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it um, to be about the middle of that piece of paper. So it's there, and don't forget to slide that piece on one of these so that that's pre-done. And then we're going to cut the other one approximately in half. And then this forms that base of our catapult. So we're gonna put these together. This, this is where it helps if you have somebody else to kind of give you a hand in holding these things, but obviously it is possible to do it on your own here. So you're gonna tape these together at these joints to make that kind of rectangular base. we've got that base together, whichever way it looks nicer to you can be face up. And now we're going to roll a couple more pieces. And then with the first one of these, 
We're again gonna cut it right about in half. And then this is gonna form the uprights on our structure. Um, so again, make sure that that piece is still floating free in the middle there. And we're just gonna tape on either side. Now for this next part, if you've got one big rubber band, you know, this can kind of wait to the end. Um, but if you're using a couple of rubber bands like I have here, um, we're gonna need to kind of worry about that right now. So I've got two rubber bands. Um, if you had one long one, like I said, we can wait on this. So for right now to connect these, um, we're gonna cross them over each other. Um, and then we're going to loop one around the other one reach underneath this other loop and pull it through so that it's got a little connection there. It kind of makes your shorter ones into a longer one. And you can loop several together if you need to. Um, so that's gonna be important to loop around our next piece, which is going to be this crossbar here. So for this one, you can kind of eyeball the distance between those two. Um, and you know, you're gonna want it fairly tight there. So if you need to sort of trim after you cut the first time, that's better than cutting it too short. So cut off about where I measured it. That's gonna fit there. So with my shorter rubber band, I need to make sure that I slip these two loops on here, or if you have a chain, just your end two loops so that I have you have that pull strength here. So that that's there. We're gonna tape this crossbar in place here. So now we need to support this piece of it so that when you're pulling back, it has a little bit more structure. So we need to make two more of those rolls that we did earlier the ends and then really for these they'll be about long enough you want to add another piece of tape kind of right above instead of in the middle um that you can like mine tour here a little bit so we can just cover that with tape obviously if you wanted this to be more colorful you could use you know colored sheets of paper um, to make it all different crazy colors you could you know if you do just have white paper you can draw on it afterwards if you want to make it more colorful that way now we need to, again, kind of measure um, how it's going to support it and see how it fits. We'll basically be cutting the other one to match. And then we're going to take those in. got one more piece we need to add. So the piece that you cut this little movable bar off of, that's basically as long as you want that sort of movement arm to be. So you can just pull that one back out from wherever you put it, and we're gonna tape it against that movable piece so that it can move back and forth. And now um, we can stretch our rubber band and put it over that arm. So now when you pull it back, it's gonna be behind that arm. Um, if you had one rubber band, you could just loop it um, and use this to kind of hold that in. Um, and then our last piece is our um, plastic spoon here. If you have a bottle cap or something, um, we're just now gonna tape it to the top here. And then that's what's gonna hold whatever you launch. So when you go to launch it, you're gonna need to hold the base down. So you can kind of put your hand underneath there, pull down on the spoon, lock it in place with your hand, put whatever you wanna launch there. And then you can just let it go and make it fly. So to finish off there, we've got our finished catapult. Um, 
can just take a little crinkle piece of paper so it's not gonna damage anything. Put it in that little spoon and kind of hold the base and then you just let it fall. And that's it. There's paper catapult.